Support for IU Women's Basketball Rising to the Top provided by IU Credit Union, offering mobile access to IU Credit Union accounts, helping account holders check balances, transfer funds, and pay bills through their mobile devices. Available through the IU Credit Union apps for iPhone and Android. Columbus Area Visitor Center, celebrating everywhere art and unexpected architecture in Columbus, Indiana. Tickets for guided architecture tours and more at columbus.in.us. IU Center for Rural Engagement, extending IU Bloomington resources to improve Hoosier lives in partnership with communities and organizations. Rural.indiana.edu. And Community Cars Auto Group, providing a family of new and used car dealerships, service centers, and a newly updated collision center in the Bloomington area. 2200 South Walnut and at communitycars.com. And by members like you. Thank you. It's been a historic season for the Indiana University women's basketball team. I'm Joe Wren, and tonight we bring you a special program from the WTIU newsroom, IU women's basketball rising to the top. Indiana's run at an NCAA championship has come to a premature end, but the Hoosiers showed they've arrived and belong on the national stage. Ahead, we'll look back on the season, hear from players, head coach Terry Morin, fans who turned out by the thousands this year and more. We're joined now by Pat Bean, who followed the Hoosiers through the season. Welcome to the show, Pat. Thanks, Joe. Great season, but why Monday night? That was that was hard. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Joe. We figured we'd be talking about a uh, third straight 16 sweet 16 appearance for the Indiana women, but uh, Miami threw a wrench into those plans. Um, much to the disappointment of 14,000 fans that have packed the assembly hall, uh, expecting the Hoosiers to move on. Um, let's take a look back at the season. It wasn't supposed to end like this for the Indiana women's basketball team. Entering the NCAA tournament as a number one seed with aspirations of playing for a national title, the Hoosiers were stunned by a second round loss to Miami on their own court. The 70 to 68 loss to the ninth seeded Hurricanes brought an abrupt end to what had been the best season in program history. They finished the regular season 27 and three, won their first Big Ten title in 40 years, earned their first NCAA top seed ever, and we're ranked number two in the nation heading into the tournament. And when the dust settles, we're gonna look back at uh, all the memories uh, that we made this season. And, um, you know, it, it, it hurts now, but, um, you know, this team will go down in history as one of the very best. But the pain was evident Monday night, especially for teammates of Grace Berger. She has been the team's heart and soul and had returned for a fifth season and a chance to win a Big Ten title. Obviously, I'm upset, you know, my last game with Grace and, um, it's been a privilege to play with her these past four years, so <laughs> I just I just hate that it has to end like this for her. It was during Berger's five years that the program rose to the top. Before her arrival, IU had been to the NCAA tournament just twice since the turn of the century. Since then, they made the tournament every year but 2020 when it was canceled due to the pandemic. Just to see where we came from when I you know first got here um, in 2018 to where we are now, um, it's definitely you know one of those moments where it um, kind of feels surreal. Morin says Berger will go down as one of the best ever to wear an IU uniform. Just so grateful that, um, as I, you know, I said that she's, uh, you know, decided to become an Indiana Hoosier five years ago uh, when she had a lot of different options. Uh, she, she chose us. That Indiana did as well as it did this season was something not many saw coming. The Big Ten coaches picked IU to finish third in the conference behind Iowa and Ohio State. But people started to take notice when IU went into Knoxville and dominated 11th ranked Tennessee, one of the top women's programs in history. Two weeks later, they won the Vegas Invitational, despite playing in a glorified ballroom that drew national outrage about the conditions under which the women had to play. It felt like because it got so many, so many ticks, I think on social that we had we had taken a couple steps backwards uh, in this moment. And um, and I shared that with the site coordinator. You know, we have an obligation to grow our game. And um, we, we completely missed on this opportunity. IU lost Berger to an injury in Vegas, but in the following game, the Hoosiers blew out sixth-ranked North Carolina in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. They finished the pre-conference portion of their schedule 12-0. and But playing without Berger for what would be eight games caught up with them, and IU lost its first game of the season at Michigan State and their final game of 2022. It would be two months before they'd lose again. Indiana ripped off 13 straight wins, including seven against Big Ten teams ranked in the top 25. 
Then, in front of the first home sellout in history, the Hoosiers clinched at least a share of the Big Ten title with a rout of rival Purdue that improved their record to 26-1 and overall and 16-1 and in the Big Ten. To go out cutting down the net, something I've you know, been working for since my freshman year, it's, you couldn't ask for a better ending. But that was the high point for the Hoosiers. IU lost its season finale at Iowa, then fell in the semifinals of the Big Ten tournament to Ohio State. And after blowing out Tennessee Tech in their NCAA opener, the Hoosiers were eliminated by Miami. And a season that had held such promise ended with a great disappointment. Their plans were, you know, to win a national championship and we'll, we'll regroup and then the goals will remain the same. To win another Big Ten championship, to, you know, get to a, a Final Four. So, Pat, I thought we'd be, we'd be talking to you uh, in Greenville, South Carolina, for the Final Four. Can you maybe just break down a little bit about what happened? Well, well, Joe, Indiana may have peaked just a little early. I mean, I think had the NCAA tournament started a month ago, um, they'd still be playing. They had dominated the second half of the Big Ten season. They beat uh, six ranked teams in a nine-game stretch at one point and were unquestionably the second-best team in the nation. But they lost that season finale on a buzzer beater at Iowa. And you have to wonder if maybe that shook their confidence a little bit. And then uh, the big thing was Mackenzie Holmes getting injured in the Big Ten tournament. Uh, she set out the game against Tennessee Tech and obviously wasn't 100% against Miami. You know, despite not getting to the Final Four, but this team really did rise to a new level. Yeah, definitely. We've heard the accomplishments over and over. You know, the 28 and 4 record, the first Big Ten title in 40 years, reaching number two in the nation. But this year wasn't a fluke. Uh, the program has been on the rise since Terry Morin took over in 2014. They won the WNIT title in 2018 and have made the NCAA tournament field every year since. Um, but after getting to the Elite Eight two years ago and Sweet 16 last year, this has to be a disappointing end. Yeah. So lots to look forward to, though. Yes, yeah. With the, they returned pretty much everybody except for Grace Berger. So I'd expect them to be preseason Big Ten favorites and ranked in the top five, top ten going into next season. Uh, Berger was the team's second leading scorer, but, you know, they've got Chloe Moore McNeil, Sid Parrish, Sarah Scalia, and Yarden Garzon, all average nine points or better, and you would uh, hope one of them would step up next year. And they've got Mackenzie Holmes returning. I mean, a first-team All-American, and, uh, you know, and Lily Meister, who backed up Holmes this year, came on really strong, so she's going to be more than a capable backup. And they've got uh, a pair of freshman guards coming in, who, so there shouldn't be much drop-off. All right, Pat, thanks so much and for all your coverage this year. Appreciate it. Thanks, Joe. With the Indiana women's program becoming a player on the national stage, nobody might be more excited than Scott Dolson. Clayton Baumgarth sat down with IU's athletic director to talk about the historic season. In Scott Dolson's office overlooking the north side end zone of IU Memorial Stadium, there's a feeling of excitement in the air. I've said it for years and other people have said it as well that women's basketball for a long time here at IU was a sleeping giant and was ready just to be uh, wakened up. In Dolson's opinion, there's one person in particular to thank for the development of the team. Terry Morin has done a phenomenal job as our head coach in really building the program to where it is today. Coach Morin's contract was extended in 2021 through the 2026 and 2027 season. Dolson was coy to say whether Coach Morin's contract with IU will be extended again or not, but he did have this to say. I can say this, you know, we want Terry here for a long, long time. There's no question about that. So, so we're, hopefully she wants to be here and we want her here as well. The 27-3 and three Hoosiers haven't just been dominating the basketball court, though. Dolson is particularly impressed with how much the women are achieving in the classroom with a department-leading 3.62 average GPA. They symbolize everything that we want in our department, and, and having that level of success in the classroom while at the same time achieving at the highest levels on, on the court just are it's amazing to me, and just I'm so proud of them. All this winning has helped increase the sale of team merchandise, which thanks to the NIL, goes to the student athletes who make it possible. It's great for our student athletes, and there's no question that our women's program and our, our success in women's basketball has really driven those sales for them. As the basketball season heated up more and more, crowd sizes have grown to the point of selling out Simon Scott Assembly Hall for the season finale against Purdue. Dolson says that sort of atmosphere is something the department strives for. It just really creates such a, a more positive student-athlete experience here, and that's what we're all about. 
is, is making certain our student athletes have an incredible experience in every way. Despite the team being knocked out in the second round of the NCAA tournament, Dolson says getting placed as the number one seed is still an incredible achievement. It's just an amazing accomplishment. It's like winning the outright Big Ten championship. It's another big accomplishment. I remember two years ago making the Elite Eight, just continue to tick off accomplishment after accomplishment and building those bricks in the program. For WTIU, I'm Clayton Baumgarth. Dolson was around to shepherd Indiana into the age of the NCAA's name, likeness, and image policy, which allows players to cash in while in school. And with the women's team winning the Big Ten, sales of team merchandise took off. Liz DeSantis has this story. The successful season for the women's team means more than just increased fans following the program. It also provides extra financial opportunities for the players. If IU were to win, go to the Final Four or win a national championship, it will definitely heighten, you know, the profile of a Grace Berger or Mackenzie Holmes. In 2021, the NCAA allowed student athletes to profit off of NILs, or name, image, and likeness, meaning players are able to cash in on opportunities like never before. It also allowed players to remain in school instead of leaving early for the pros and the money that comes with it. You definitely see it kind of being a reason that a lot of these people, a lot of these top athletes are staying around, um, obviously for the experience of playing the sport, but also um, to, you know, make some money while they're doing it and really set them up um, for their future and life after sports. IU Senior Associate Athletic Director Jeremy Gray says some of the higher earning students can generate tens of thousands of dollars through NIL deals. But the merchandise is also a rallying cry for fans. It's everywhere. And then you walk, you know, you'll be at a restaurant in downtown Bloomington and somebody's got a Mackenzie Holmes T-shirt on. And it's like, Indiana women's basketball is a thing. They're selling shirts. Indiana shop retail manager Bill Grossman says he's seen the popularity of the team grow this season through sales of NIL gear in his shop. But as, as the fan base grows, we are starting to see uh, a little bit more uptick in business uh, as it relates to game day for the ladies. But Gray says it's not just the success of the team, but the stories of the players. From the injury to Berger to unexpected MVP candidates like Mackenzie Holmes that drive interest for endorsements. So there's just so many great stories to tell about this team. It just makes the jobs of the storytellers a lot easier. Berger says she's been surprised at how strong the support has been from the community. A community like Bloomington um, that's so excited about IU Athletics, I think, um, has you know, kind of caught me off guard, maybe unexpected to some people how much support we've gotten as athletes and um, how excited local businesses are um, to kind of promote us. For Indiana News Desk. More. I'm Liz DeSantis. Gray says some Hoosier athletes are making in the tens of thousands of dollars off their name, image and likeness deals. Indiana returned two starters and the first sub off the bench from last year's NCAA Sweet 16 team. But to rise to the number two team in the nation this year, the Hoosiers needed significant input from a pair of transfers and a freshman from the other side of the world. Pat Bean has this report. After spending three seasons at Minnesota and never finishing higher than a tie for ninth in the Big Ten, Sarah Scalia wanted a change. The Gophers' leading scorer in 2022, she entered her name in the transfer portal and wasn't sure what to expect. Indiana was actually one of like the first schools that reached out to me and they wanted me to come visit like the first official weekend that it was available, so I ended up doing that. She committed to the Hoosiers during that visit. Why? I wanted to win at like a high level um, and especially be able to make the tournament. That's something Indiana has been doing regularly. They've made the last four NCAA tournaments, and in the last two years, they've gone to the Elite Eight and the Sweet 16. This year, they earned a number one seed for the first time in school history. Scalia had played against Indiana for three years, so she had an idea of what she was getting into when she moved from Minneapolis to Bloomington. Freshman guard Yarden Garzon had no such luxury. The transition to the U.S. from Israel hasn't been easy due to the cultural and language differences. She says IU, which has had several international players, has been very supportive, even to the point of adding something familiar for her to the breakfast table. So I just talked with them and they faced it like in a minute, in a second, and for them it's sometimes like small thing, but for me it's like the world, so every small detail is helping me a lot. Associate Athletic Director and Assembly Hall announcer Jeremy Gray went a step farther, surprising Garzon by calling out Shalosh, a Hebrew word meaning three, after Garzon made a three-pointer. 
I think Mackenzie came to me and said, hey, you said it. And I was like, what, really? And the next game I recognized it and like I heard it, it was so cool. I liked it a lot. The Hoosiers have liked what they've seen from Garzon. She started every game this season and averaged 11.1 points and 5.3 rebounds per game. She set an IU freshman record with 70 made three-pointers. But that's one of the reasons she, Scalia, and Sydney Parrish, who transferred from Oregon, were brought into the program. Their ability to shoot from the perimeter and free up All-American forward Mackenzie Holmes inside. It opens up the floor a lot, especially if they have to double on her, then someone else is open on the perimeter. And I think we've done a really good job this year as far as um, hitting our shots on the outside to, to um, when they do double Mac. Parrish grew up in Indiana and played high school ball at Hamilton Southeastern. She finished second on the team with 55 made three-pointers and Scalia third with 53. It's a testament to Coach Terry Morin and her staff that those three newcomers, along with freshman center Lily Meister, were able to gel with veterans Holmes, Grace Berger, and Chloe McNeil Moore so quickly. They finished the season 28-4 and four and won the program's first Big Ten title in 40 years. I think it was just the biggest thing was getting adjusted to the chemistry and so we've done that really well and so yeah it's been kind of crazy all the games that we've won this year. But winning is why all the new faces on the team came to IU. We love to be together, we love to hang out together so I think you, you can see it on the court that we, we love each other and we want the best for each other. For WTIU, I'm Pat Bean. Both Scalia and Garzone will be back with the Hoosiers next season. We sat down with Terry Morin's dad, Dick, last week to talk about his daughter and all things IU. Here's what he had to say. Terry's always been a very competitive young lady. I can remember many years ago when she was eight years old, she entered the punt passing kick contest in Seymour. And then eight year old against all the boys, she won it. In grade school, she went undefeated. Junior high, she, in her seventh grade, she was undefeated. In the eighth grade, she lost one. And the girls around her said, what are you crying about? That's how competitive she is. Well, of course, our whole family's competitive. Let's put it that way. Uh, my daughter, Leanne, reminds me of the Christmas times. We'd have a ping pong table set up in the garage, and it would be brutal. IU was really not struggling, was not really that good then, back then. But uh, I think Izzard, mm -hmm. I think he was a coach at that time, and uh, for some reason or another, he went a different direction. So Terry, when Lynn Dunn came to Purdue, that's where she wanted to go. She a uh, point guard there. She was the point guard when they won their first Big Ten tournament for Purdue University. And then after that, she started her coaching career. I'm sitting in our living room, well, the wife and I, and I'm looking at the Indianapolis Star. And I see there, I, says, I looked at my wife and I said, do you know that Terry's applied for the IU job? <laughs> she never told us, she never told us. And the reason for that was, she said, I didn't want to worry you. If I didn't get the job, fine, you didn't know about it. If I did, I'll let you know. She was in Florida and she called and said, I'm coming home. So we knew that she was gonna get the IU job. In nine years, go from where she is to, hey, how about being selected number one in the Big Ten, in the NCAA tournament? That's an accomplishment in itself, isn't it? Oh, the crowds are getting now? My goodness gracious. You, can, you, can, you, can, you can't, can't imagine it. It, it, it. It's like a dream come true. It really is. Title IX, she, 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 she feels that they still get the, the recognition that they should. And uh, perhaps she'll continue to work on it and uh, they'll get that recognition one of these days. Little Bree, Bree Shoemaker, she said, you mind, uh, early, oh, this has been three or four years ago. She said, you mind if I call you Pops because you remind me of my grandpa. I said, absolutely not, go right ahead. So then it just got from there, came from there, yeah. I would come for the practices and be able to sit down over here on the sidelines and and uh, the kids would come up and talk and we'd sit there and talk. They, they were all very cordial with me, or to, for, to me, I should say, which um, yeah, made me feel right at home. Or I made them feel at home, I don't know which one it was.
Well, you heard about Terry playing for Purdue. We're joined now by her coach then, currently the general manager of the Indiana Fever, Lynn Dunn. Thank you so much for coming on the program. You're welcome. So you recruited Terry out of Seymour High School. What did you see in her? What did you think she was and destined for coaching? Well, first of all, I actually didn't recruit her. She'd already been recruited and signed, and then I became the head coach. But I was thrilled uh, to inherit someone of her quality, someone that had such an outstanding season um, at Seymour High School, and I knew she played under Donna Sullivan. And so I knew she was going to be a part, a piece of us building um, a really outstanding, successful program at Purdue. Now you had teams at Purdue that had you know high aspirations like uh, you did this season, then lost early, then expected in the tournament. So how, as a coach, how do you cope with that? Well, it's always disappointing um, to lose, especially to lose on a last second shot like happened with them. Uh, in the Iowa game, and then it, that happened with them um, in the, the last game against Miami. You just don't dwell on those last-second plays. You dwell on what you did well this year. You dwell on how you progressed. You dwell on how you've made progress uh, from day one at the beginning of this season to, to, to the end of the season. And then you look carefully at, at – uh, the games that you lost and you focus on, okay, what can we do differently? What can we do better? So that this time next year, with everyone returning, I believe, except for Grace Berger, uh, we don't lose that last game. We, we, we do even better, and now we're in the Sweet 16, and we're in the Elite 8, and we're making the steps forward. So you dwell on what we did well, and you dwell on what we need to do to get better. Now, you sustained success at Purdue in the 90s, so you know what that looks like. Do you see that that's something Terry's building at IU? Well, Terry's a really smart coach, and she's got a great staff. And so I know she has the ability as well as the experiences now um, to build on what she's established. And, and I think it takes a lot of toughness. You know, uh, you learn a lot about dealing with adversity. You learn a lot about when you have tough losses. Um, and, you, you know, I guess that old saying is you can get bitter or you can get better. And, and I think Kel, uh, uh, I think uh, Terry's in a situation where, you know, she'll learn from this. Uh, she'll learn from the Iowa game. She'll learn from the Miami game. Um, she'll take the team that's coming back. And I'm excited about Holmes another year, Clomore, Parrish, Scalia. My goodness gracious. <laughs> to have everyone coming back with one player is just wonderful for her. We just have a, under 30 seconds. One of the funnier moments this year after the Iowa home game, you literally floored Terry by wearing an IU sweatshirt. How close are you to? Well, for me to work at Purdue for nine years <laughs> and to win Big Ten championships and get to the Final Four, uh, and then to turn around and put on an Indiana sweatshirt, I know there's still people that are in shock. <laughs> they may still be trying to get catch their breath. But that indicates to, to everyone how proud I am of Terry and what she's done. Um, I'm now an IU fan. You know, I'm sold on Terry and I'm sold on the Hoosiers, uh, and I'm thrilled for what they've done for women's basketball. Everybody what? in the state of Indiana needs to be good. Notre Dame, Purdue, Indiana, uh, I'm for all of them. Lynn, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. You're welcome. The Indiana women have inspired a new generation of basketball players, and although they're young, they're still passionate about the game. Molly Murphy reports. Kids in the community are excited about the success of the IU women's basketball team, and they're looking to the players for inspiration and important lessons. I like them because they never actually give up. They keep trying and trying, and they never give up, even if they lose. Head coach Terry Morin says the players can have a really special impact on the kids that look up to them. Our players understand that they um, there's a responsibility, you know, to being a basketball a women's basketball uh, player here in Bloomington, and and their their job is not just to go out and perform, but it's also to be an inspiration, you know, for for young girls to look up to. Seeing the women's skills in person has taught the kids how to play the game. Like if you don't know how to play basketball. Like, you can watch some of the games and they can, like, help you play. When you have a team um, that's full of the McKenzie's and the Gracebergers and the Sydney's and the Chloe's and, you know, it, and you don't have to go very far, right, to, to, um, to support them and cheer them on. 
Hoosier pride doesn't go away when the game's over, though. These kids represent their team outside of Assembly Hall with an iconic design. So first of all, what are you wearing right now? Candy stripes. Why are you wearing candy stripes? Because I love IU. They each have their own favorite player they cheer for at the games. Do you have a favorite player? Um, Sydney. Sydney Parrish? Mm -hmm. Why is Sydney Parrish your favorite? Because she gets so many threes. I like the IU women's basketball team because um, I love going to the games and I love Sarah Scalia. Who's your favorite player? Sydney Parrish. Why Sydney? Because she's a great teammate and she always gets rebounds and she's really aggressive. Okay. Has that taught you to be more aggressive on the court? Yes. I want to, when I grow up, to be as good as Grace Berger. That's how you do it. For WTIU, I'm Molly Murphy. We're out of time. Have a great weekend. Support for IU Women's Basketball Rising to the Top provided by IU Credit Union, offering mobile access to IU Credit Union accounts, helping account holders check balances, transfer funds, and pay bills through their mobile devices. Available through the IU Credit Union apps for iPhone and Android. Columbus Area Visitor Center, celebrating everywhere art and unexpected architecture in Columbus, Indiana. Tickets for guided architecture tours and more at columbus.in.us. IU Center for Rural Engagement, extending IU Bloomington resources to improve Hoosier lives in partnership with communities and organizations. Rural.indiana.edu. And Community Cars Auto Group, providing a family of new and used car dealerships, service centers, and a newly updated collision center in the Bloomington area. 2200 South Walnut and at communitycars.com. And by members like you. Thank you.